on this journey that has been my channel whenever I feel like uploading something, one thing that I've noticed in terms of my vocal videos is it's definitely made me a bit healthier in terms of how I come across with my feelings about media. And the one thing that it's definitely taught me was to just be myself. That's the most important thing. That's what you're coming for. And for me, you know, when I was much younger and got the internet around 2011 and animation is my special interest and you got, you know, grown people or older teens talking about animation, something you enjoy, and, you know, you really like the content they produce. And if, depending on who you are, uh, you go along with what they say without really truly doing the homework for yourself and that's what for me i was suffering through the most is listening to someone else do the homework and not me actually doing the homework myself and actually forming my own perspective and my own take not to mention popular opinions they're pretty scary you know uh i've talked about it before uh, it's, it's definitely scary when you're in the minority of saying, hey, you know, I like this thing, or I don't like this thing, I'm indifferent. And, you know, I've definitely learned that different perspectives are okay, you know, doing your own thing is okay, opening up a dialogue is the best thing you can do, you know. I mean, literally, that's why the comment section is literally there, you know. It's not just there for you to just say, hey, this thing is blank. Agree with me. Okay, bye. Hope you agree. You know, that's not, you know, that's not what the comment section is for, you know? And I got to be honest, in the past, I just kind of went along with everything. And even if it was toxic, I went along with it. And looking back at it, you know, being myself was probably the most healthy thing I could do. But, you know, when you're in the minority and, you know, you're a bit awkward because I'm awkward and shy as hell, you know, it's, you know, it's a little weird. So, of course, you're going to go along with the status quo. But when you do that, you know, you definitely kind of lose track of your own thoughts on something. And... One thing that hurt me over time was I remember having my own perspective on the movie Sing. Uh, I remembered, I was like, hey, I like this second jukebox musical that came out in the year 2016 with Trolls. I'm, I'm happy with what I received. But then, of course, I watched people review the movie and the consensus was Hey, did y'all know Illumination's bad again? Yeah, this movie's bad. And, you know, I was very insecure about my feelings on Illumination and being a fan, not, well, not to mention a huge Despicable Me and Minions fan at the same time. And so I was like, yeah, Illumination bad. De Death to Illumination Studios sing bad. And it wasn't the matter of me going oh, this person very much enlightened me with their perspective on the movie Sing. I agree, this is bad. No, 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 I just agreed b because that was the status quo, not actually thinking about my own perspective. And throughout time and years, I was like, yeah, Illumination bad, Sing bad, because X amount of people said so. And when it came down to like going onto my Twitter account, because I follow a lot of animation stuff, and when people would open up the conversation of, hey, um, what are y'all's thoughts on the movie Sing? I always felt left out of that conversation because I let others consume my thoughts and not what Spectre thought at the end of the day. 
And that always upset me. And one of my goals was to sit down, watch Sing, get my own perspective on it. And that's where we are here today. Shake it like that. Shake it like that. Yeah, so one thing that hurt this movie was the fact that it came out in the year 2016 and like really late in 2016 and like we just got off the coattails of Zootopia and um, everyone were like, it's kind of funny because like everyone was like, oh, the furry anthro movie about animals vibing in cities. Okay. And, like, I feel like people would be chill if it was just that. Like, like I can't tell you how many anthro animated characters are out there, my goodness. And especially ones that are just in random human settings. Um, but, like, people really wanted it to be Zootopia for, like, some damn reason. And I don't know why, but, like, people were asking more out of a movie about animals just vibing, trying to enter a singing competition, like... People wanted it to be Zootopia Part 2, where they talk about furry discrimination. I see you, America Online. I see y'all looking at me. I see y'all. But, like, that's not the goal of seeing. It just wants to be a fun movie that occasionally makes jokes about, hey, you know, our main character, Buster Moon, he a koala. It, he can just vibe inside of a desk because he's a tiny little koala like little stuff like that they like they ain't they ain't going deep and like if, if y'all wanted sing to go deep uh, like i'm i'm sorry like th th this this isn't the movie like seriously like people make fun of the trailer for being cringe but like the the trailer kind of shows you and advertise like hey we ain't doing that Zootopia shit. <laughs> like, it, like it, it pretty much says loud and clear, hey, we are not Zootopia. Even though Zootopia had, like, marketing that didn't really advertise that, hey, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about furry discrimination here. Um, but, like, if y'all wanted, you know, furry discrimination in the animated movie, like, just go watch Cats Don't Dance. Like, y'all y'all have a better time with Cats Don't Dance, really, really good WB 2D animated movie. Highly recommend. Go watch the OG, you know? Go watch that. But, like, yeah, no, this was, this was dumb. Koala theater owner Buster Moon hosts a singing competition to promote his struggling theater following financial problems brought up by the bank representative Judith. A mishap involving the glass eye of Buster's assistant el elderly Miss Crawley applies two extra zeros to the prize money, and the misprint flyers are blown out the window into the streets. Animals across the city gather to audition for this show, and yeah, that's, um, that's Sing. Okay, so I'm gonna be real with y'all, America Online. Sing is a very straightforward movie. It's another Save the Rec Center story with a third act split up because of Buster Moon's little whoopsie poopsie with the flyers, with the grand prize money, and trying to save his theater. You know, it, it's, it's a rather straightforward cliche animated movie. But I didn't have a problem with that really mostly because of the presentation it, it's not trying to be anything big or grandiose and because of that it just has fun with itself the thing that sells the movie is it, it's not just like buster moon and the rest of the cast of characters are just like side characters and it's just focusing on Buster and I think if that was the case I think this would have been really even more dreadfully cliche and probably not as good but the movie takes a lesson from the studio's previous film Secret Life of Pets and it just takes the side characters that's not the main character 
And they're like, all right, well, your character, you get a subplot. Your character, you get a subplot. And we all wrap it up in a nice little bow that comes together. And, like, throughout the movie, you're just focusing on, like, different animals and how they interact with the situation they're being presented with, their life, and, like, why this singing competition is so important to not only Buster, but them. So, really, this movie is, like, as I said, like, really straightforward cliche, but the characters are what make this movie really special and fun. And th that's why I like seeing so much it is really for the character moments and the character interaction and like character, uh, I, I shouldn't say character study, but character driven. That that's, that's a good term. Character driven. It's, and that's why I like it. it it's fun, but like it, it has fun with its character driven stuff. And it, it's just it's just fun that that's that's all i have to say it's just it's just fun and i like it just like my other favorite animated movie that i don't shut the hell up about this is also a jukebox musical and if you remove the like the soundtrack like not without visuals if you remove that for a hot minute the songs work in the movie it's a singing competition so i feel like it's easier to throw in songs um, without any problems. It, for what the film offers in terms of the visual aspect and the importance uh, in it for, you know, the story makes perfect sense. Um, and in terms of like you're casually listening to it on a CD or whatever way you listen to your music nowadays, uh, it, it's a bop. Like, I love it. Like, I listen to it right next to the Trolls soundtrack. Like, both are, like, A1. Uh, pr pretty good. Pretty good pop music and other genres, because there's other genres in this, sort of, in this movie. I, I think it works for me, personally. I don't know about y'all, so if it doesn't work for y'all, um, that that's you. You do you, I do me, you know? Um, I, I, I guess if you have a problem with it, I guess say it in the comment section down below or something. I don't really know what to say here, but, um, I like the music. It's, it's pretty fun. Trolls and Sing are weird. Like, November, Trolls came out. December, Sing came out. Both jukebox musicals, but also have Ariana Grande in it for some weird reason. Like it was like it was like such a weird and odd coincidence that Ari just dropped bops in both. Is it even a character except for Sing? But she was barely a character though. But like, it, it was weird. But like, I like that it's weird because like Ari dropped some bops in both, and she just left, and, and I like it. The thumbnail makes sense now. Oh, I'm sure glad that's over with. Me too! Yeah, but you know, I learned something today. So, one thing that I noticed in between 2020 and 2021 was a lot of people on Twitter.com, that's more on the animation side of things, say that really throughout the whole decade that was 2010 and Illumination being around for a whole decade they learn absolutely nothing from the discussion about illumination in fact the only thing they learned was to be disrespectful dramatic as hell and have nothing to say because you're just yelling at a wall and that's not a good sign when that's all we learned and we didn't learn anything of uh like constructive conversations of how you feel about the studio or a single movie they just produced and when it comes to discussion time you know you have something enriching to say or add to the conversation and hearing that and especially as an illumination fan this hurt me because we truly should have listened to people that were 
trying to start a conversation. But in the end, we ended up hyping up people that for a whole decade added nothing and very much taught unhealthy conversations about media in a studio. And to me, thinking about that, maybe illumination could be in a different perspective now. Maybe people like myself would be in this kind of position where I am now, where it's like, yeah, you know, conversations matter. If you want to do that dramatic, uh, no, nons no nonsense, talking to a wall stuff, take a time machine, go back to 2010 when that's acceptable. But it's 2020, it's 2021, people are waking up, people are now realizing that it's never too late to start a conversation about Illumination or one singular film you watch from Illumination. So really, you know, start a conversation. That's, that's really all I learned from at least this point of view and perspective. In the 2010s, you know, the thing known as, you know, the animation community, animation fans, it got pretty big in the 2010s, and I don't think we fully realize that, not to mention film discussion. And I don't think a lot of us kind of realizes that we're all a bunch of casual people. Not a lot of us fall into that reviewing spectrum. A lot of us are not Grace Randolph. We don't have that power or ability. A lot of us just want to, like myself, you know, we may have review in the title or someone may view us as a reviewer, but in the end, for someone like myself, I am just a very casual person who just starts up conversations about whatever I feel like because I'm a multi-fandom baby, but I love, I love me some animation. And that's where a lot of us fall under, and I think a lot of us probably watched a lot of people that do fall into that reviewing spectrum or big name animation person who's trying to start up a conversation. I think the two got mixed together by accident. And I think that's where we definitely got a toxic quote that I feel like that's where I was put into this position of kind of being afraid to actually admit my full feelings on Sing. And it really boils down to during like around 2014, maybe even 2013, a lot of critics kind of came together and some people in animation fan discussions kind of came together and they were kind of like, hey, we're kind of tired of like laid back, happy, fun time, funny animated movies. Like we want more deeper, emotional animated movies put to cinema. And on pen and paper, this isn't a bad narrative to actually start. But I'm going to be honest, you're going to have to find ways to work out the kinks to make sure that you're not discluding these type of animated movies. And I think part of the thing is it kind of goes back to the whole being dramatic, being disrespectful, pretty much talking to a wall. You know, you need to have a very strong conversation before you do anything. And I think that was the problem back then was people were using that dramatic motto instead of actually doing a conversation. And I think that is a good conversation to have about wanting more deeper or emotional animated movies. I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a very appropriate conversation to definitely have. But then Minions happened in 2015 and it scared the hell out of a bunch of people. And that's when we got the new quote of the day that kind of started off as a healthy one that should have branched out into a more healthy conversation, but ended up backfiring because of the whole dramatic as hell takes and everything. And it really boiled down to, oh, well, you're just an imbecile and you just like supporting mediocrity and you can't handle bigger and better things. And 
I notice, especially myself, but one thing I noticed was animated movies that were more on the easygoing, laid back, uh, funny animated movies. I definitely noticed that they were definitely hugely frowned upon by not only movie critics, but also animation fans. Not every animation fan, but the majority that gets the most attention. And because of that, I definitely notice unhealthy patterns, and I could be a good example. DreamWorks Trolls, the first film that came out in 2016, was a mixed bag. But the, the majority that was more on the mixed bag side, that was more, hey, I don't like DreamWorks Trolls, they were the ones being dramatic, disrespectful, and yelling at a wall. And because of that, it got really toxic. And I saw the toxicity that was happening towards me and other Trolls fans. It wasn't healthy. And for me, when I was making my channel back in 2018, all of my content no longer, no longer exists. Copa was a weird time. But if you're an OG and you remember that piece of content, you definitely remember when it came down to 2019 and 2020, I definitely realized I was very defensive. And I think that's mostly because I noticed that a lot of people, when it came down to saying, oh, hey, I like something akin to DreamWorks Trolls, but I'm very, very scared to look like an idiot because I like this. So I have to heavily defend this to keep my intellectual animation card. And, you know, that's definitely where I'm, I was when talking about trolls, but I'm going to be honest, I'm in a completely different place where I'm having different, like, proper conversations that aren't defensive. And because of that, it definitely taught me to be a bit healthier when it comes down to, you know, the high majority is, hey, my opinion is different. And I learned that, oh, okay, well, all I need to do is just do me and have a conversation because people are going to in the end respect that and when it comes down to sing you saw how i presented my perspective the movie sing just vibed with me so well that compared to dreamworks trolls i don't have a lot to say I have something to say about Sing, but it's not a lot. And I wasn't too critical, mostly because it just vibed well with me. And when I think about something like this, where I can't defend it too well, or I don't have a lot to say, but have something to say because I really enjoy this thing, you know, I should be having an essay on Sing, not just tiny little tidbits of how I feel, you know, I have to really defend this thing that's viewed as critically bad. And I think the problem really boils down to that cute little statement of, oh, well, you're just an imbecile and you just embrace mediocrity and you can't handle bigger and better things. Thinking about this statement now, and looking at when I talked about part one about illumination, it boils down to everyone was not having a intellectual conversation about how they felt. And if people did have that, we wouldn't be here. But at the same time, you know, I think it's appropriate time to definitely learn when someone wants to have a conversation with you versus someone who is extremely bitter because statements like this or being dramatic and not adding anything and that's where the problem of illumination is in the year 2020 is we went a whole decade in 2010 of nothing happening and if something did happen that was a conversation it got overthrown by the nothingness and when you hear someone say, oh, well, you're just an idiot because you support something 
that isn't deep or broader, in the end, maybe that person's trying to have a proper conversation and maybe you should definitely help them have that proper conversation. But if it's clear as clear as day, that's not what they want to do. They are bitter. And I think you should definitely leave them in their space and go find someone that truly wants to have a conversation and respects you for your perspective and you respect the other person for their perspective. And in the end, I just kind of learned that, hey, I like seeing and that's just me. And yeah, I may not have a lot to say about saying or wasn't too critical about saying, but that's just because it vibed with me well. And talking about saying in this way is a way for me to express how I feel, a way that suits me personally in my style of having a conversation. And that isn't a bad thing.